Hi folks, Ariel over here at Finest. Today I want to do a little video about how I check and clean my chimney. This is something I get asked a lot about with my little wood stove. If you're brand new here, please look at some of my other wood stove videos down below. They're in under the See More tab um, because you're probably going to ask uh, why do I have such a small stove? Why do I burn pine? Why does my chimney go out through the wall? Why is it so small? All those things. If you're brand new here, welcome and go check those out so you know all about the rest of my situation. I find uh, that wood stove videos tend to bring a lot of brand new people who are not generally following my channel and don't know what's going on around here like the rest of y'all. So, the stove is out cold. It's fairly early in the morning. I let it burn out overnight. Nothing hot at all here. So the house is just a little chilly. So I'm going to do this quick and get it back going. Now I had retrofit this wood stove. The, it was not in my tiny house originally. And I just decided I didn't want to go through the roof and cut a new hole in my roof because they all seem to leak eventually when you've got holes in your roof for anything. So I went out through the wall. This is three inch um, double wall insulated pipe, but I do get some creosote. Now that is based on two things. Partly the woods I have to burn, as you probably know, I burn pine and aspen, which are softwoods. It's what grows around here for many, many hundreds of miles, no hardwoods. And so that is what I burn and the generally small size. Now this stove, as far as I know, is no longer available. It's a Gray Stove Works Mini CT12, and I don't think uh, Mr. Lloyd Gray is manufacturing them anymore, so I can't tell you where to get one. But I've been pretty happy with it overall. But one of the things that I think is an issue with all small wood stoves, this one I know the most about because it's the one I have, is that, the, you know, just from the size, you've got such a small firebox, it's plenty, um, it's plenty large enough to put out enough heat to thoroughly heat my house, partly because my house is so tiny, obviously, but that's not an issue. But the um, chimney does cool fairly rapidly, even with having insulated pipe. So between softwoods, which don't burn quite as hot, it's not that the pine, the sap in the pine creates creosote. I've talked about that before. It's the, the fire temperature, but the softwoods don't burn quite as hot. And then I do get some rapid cooling where I go through the wall here. So I do get some creosote. So about once a month, I check this and clean it out. Now, the advantage compared to a big house is that this is pretty easy to do. What I actually do is pull my pipe apart. So if I just wiggle this here, that joint comes loose. I can lift this off the top of my stove. There's my stove pipe. Now I'm going to take this outside. It's snowing a little bit today, so we'll see how the camera cooperates with that um, and show you guys how I clean this. Now, usually the most important thing to clean here it, on the stove itself is where the air vents out the top here, and there's some baffling and stuff in there that helps with reburning the exhaust gases. But I'll get a few little flakes of creosote or ash that fall down into the, this hole is three inches in diameter, but I'll show you down in here, this hole is smaller. So to clean that, because there's no good way to clean it out because of the baffling, things don't fall directly into the wood stove like the older um, style ones, I use my little tiny vacuum. Again, the stove is out cold. There's nothing hot here at all. And I um, just vacuum any little ashes that have fallen in there. And then this straight pipe where it goes through the wall I don't pull that out because I've got it um, sealed into the wall thimble here with this brown cement stuff. So that, it, it's a really short piece because my house is small and the walls are thin. So I can use my little amazing fire scoop. This is what I use in my wood stove. Just a regular little stainless steel kitchen spoon because it fits perfectly. I can use that to just clean out any little flakes that get into the straight part um, from either side. Now I'm going to take you guys outside, pull off the outside part of the pipe, and show you how I clean out the buildup and what I have in there. Okay guys, so I can reach the outside of my stovepipe really easily because I'm standing on my planter boxes. They're all froze up for the winter and empty and hard. And again, I'm going to leave the straight pipe part, which is sealed into that wall thimble alone. And I'm going to pull the uh, straight up and down part off. And again, this is not hot. It's actually completely cold. This uh, bracket right here just helps support the chimney so that when I got some snow sliding off the roof, 
which is never that much because obviously my roof's really tiny. Um, it just supports it so that the snow doesn't push the chimney out at all. But we've got it just loose enough that I can take that whole piece off. I'm going to clean that just like I'm going to clean the inside piece here in a second. And turn this part down and like I said, I'll, I'll use my little scoop to do um, to clean out of that little straight piece. Okay guys, so I got my two main parts of my chimney here pulled off. I know that pulling a chimney apart is not the way most people are going to clean their chimney. Um, but for my tiny house and with the fact that I can reach both parts really easy and nothing's that long, it's, this is just what I've found to be the easiest way for me to clean it out. I'm going to use my handy um, fire starter. It's the same one I use indoors. Um, sawdust soaked in a little diesel. You could also use uh, paraffin, um, tiki torch fluid, any of those kind of things. And what I've found to be the easiest is if I just got these pipes sitting upside down, take a scoop of that and drop it right down in. Do the same thing on that guy. I've got these props somewhere where I know that the um, top here is not going to vent onto anything flammable. And I'm just going to let these burn out. So, I'll use my little lighter here. This one's about dead. So, light that up. This side. Light that guy. And now you can probably start to hear this is just going to create a suction. The air is sucking in the open bottom of both of these. My, I'm not going to want to touch this now. My outside chimney pipe, my inside chimney pipe, and you're going to start to see smoke and even some flames um, coming out of the top ends there. Now this just seems to work really efficiently to burn off any little creosote buildup any dust and ash that's gotten into there and it's just as I again as I said this probably isn't the way everyone would do it but with my tiny house this is the easiest setup I've found to really clean my chimney thoroughly. Now you can start to see the uh, smoke rolling out there sometimes you even get a few little flames coming out the top and that is why I want to make sure those you know chimney ends are not pointed toward anything flammable. If you're wondering about the flaking on the black paint there on the pipe, these pipes were originally stainless steel and I just wanted them to blend into my surroundings a little better, so I spray painted them black with a heat safe paint, but I think I used one that was a little bit cheap and it, you know, over the years it hasn't held up that well. So we're going to just let those burn there for a bit and I'm going to show you a few other things. So you come down here, you can see that's the uh, roof vent keeps rain and stuff from coming down in the pipe. But you can see the little bit of creosote built up there, and here you can see the kind of feathery flakes that were um, coming in from the sides. So it's just gonna burn. Again, you can, I don't know if you can quite see it, you can definitely see the smoke rolling out the top there. Every now and then you can get a hint of a flame, so I don't want to get the camera too close. Um, but Gonna let those burn till they burn out completely. There's no more smoke, no more heat, no more flame. Let me take you inside. Back inside here, see if my flashlight can show you what goes on. You can see the inside of the pipe there. There's a little bit of flaking creosote buildup. Um, by no means closed off. Um, the reason you can't see daylight through there is because of the curved pipe on the other end. Um, but I try to do this about once a month just to make sure everything does stay cleaned out for my little setup. Back out here you can see still got flames down there, still got smoke rolling out the top, and there you can see the pipe bend while you couldn't see straight through to see daylight on the inside. Now when I hook this back up, this part is going to go like that. And a lot of people have asked why I don't have a little T-joint here for clean out. Um, a couple reasons. 
for one, I would still have to pull apart the inside um, and clean the the straight part. So I, it wouldn't save me from needing to do some pulling apart here. And two, if creosote piled up down in that T part, there is a potential. I don't think it would be high because of the you know distance from the stove and the small size of the stove but there'd be a potential for getting a spark into there and starting a chimney fire from the accumulated creosote pile in the tea part so that's just why I don't do it um, I'm no stove expert but this is how I've been doing it for let's see this is my fourth winter in my tiny house I've had the stove all but the first year so I've been doing this for three years works for me and this is what I do. So I let those uh, main parts of the chimney keep burning off outside because they're going to burn till there's nothing at all left in there. Then they're going to go out. They cool down pretty quick because it is chilly out there. And I'll use my little brush to scrub them out. But in the meantime, I'm just going to do the little straight part here. As I said, I use, this is just a regular kitchen spoon, but it's been uh, repurposed into my fire spoon. It's what I use to scoop ashes and all kinds of things in the fireplace. But I can just use it to scrape the walls of this little straight part through the thimble so that I don't have to pull this out. I could run my brush through here. This is just as handy because it's such a short piece of pipe. Scrape any little crumbs into my ash bucket here. This is a metal pail. It's what I use to scoop ashes out of the fireplace. But again, all this is totally cold, obviously. Just make sure there's no other little crumbs in there. Not a whole lot, just got a little bit of black soot. And then, like I mentioned, I want to clean up any dust around here before I put this, you know, all back together. So I'm going to use my little vacuum cleaner for that. Again, little mini vacuum cleaner. Everything is out cold here. Don't vacuum up hot coals around your wood stove. You will start a fire in your vacuum and burn the house down. Okay guys, everything is out cold here. Can't hear any more burning. There's no more smoke. Can't see any more flames. So anything that was stuck to the sides there should be thoroughly burned loose and just dry ash. And so I'm going to just run my little pipe cleaner through my pipes and make sure I brush it all out of there. The reason I don't run this up and down through the entire chimney without taking it apart is, uh, probably should be obvious, but I would have to take off the top cap anyway and it would be hard to get around the two elbows and then because of the way modern wood stoves are built it's not just an open hole dumping down into the wood box in the wood stove so you can't run a, a cleaner down and out that opening so this works for me to visually check this. Even with the curve, I can get enough daylight through there with the uh, naked eye to see that the pipe walls are completely clean. sure I can see the whole pipe is clean. See if I can show you guys that as well. I bet with the camera it's not going to pick it up. Now there you can kind of see the end and see daylight. But there's nothing left at all 
of that um, dust on the sides of the pipe. No creosote, no nothing. So we're just going to put everything back together. Okay, so we put this back together. Just reach up here, because it's not any shorter. Slide that back through my bracket. Make sure this, because remember I had this flip down to clean this. Make sure that's lined back up. pipes back together. Now I've just got to finish inside. Inside the pipe and I've cleaned everything out here, vacuumed any little bits of dust I've knocked into anything. Just sits back on top of the wood stove and, and the pipe seats right back in there like that. I promise this stuff takes twice as long when you are trying to make a video of it because you got to move the camera all the time to the different spots but this really is not a big deal. It does not take me long at all. Now I usually knock a couple more flakes of dust onto the ground when I put that all back together. I'm gonna vacuum those real quick and light the fire back up. Okay, so everything's cleaned up, cleaned out. A little kettle with water back on top. If you heat with wood, it's a good idea to keep some kind of water simmering somewhere because the heat's so dry it helps just rehumidify your house. And got the wood stove stack full, I'm gonna light it back up. There you go. Good to go. That'll be heating up in a hurry. So that's how I clean my chimney. I do do this regularly. I'm sure plenty of you guys are gonna tell me this is silly, there's a better way to do it. My pipe should be straight through the roof. I should have a bigger stove. I should burn different wood. I should be able to run a chimney cleaner straight down through there. I should have a tea clean out. But hopefully for those of you who are actually paying attention, that covers why I don't have any of those things. This setup does work for me in my situation with this wood stove in my tiny house. It lets me stay safe. I've been using this, I'm in my fourth year in here, third year with the wood stove. It works. I've never had a chimney fire, never had any issues. My um, stove burns just fine, drafts just fine, all that. So yes, there might be a better way, there might be a different way, there might be better equipment, but this all works for me. So if you've got a tiny wood stove and you've got a tiny house, that uh, might give you some ideas for how to easily clean your own chimney. Enjoy your day. Thanks for watching, folks. If you're interested in more info on my off-grid tiny house life, check out some of my other videos here. And if you like what you're seeing, click the little picture of my house to subscribe and then hit the little bell so YouTube actually notifies you every time there's a new video available. See y'all next time.